how do you use a recovery machine to recover the refrigerant from the air conditioning system today i'm using the navac nr7 recovery machine and i'm going to show you how to use it to recover refrigerant you're watching hvac tips for technicians i'm tad let's get started the reason we're using a recovery machine and recovering the refrigerant is because we have to replace a filter dryer inside the outdoor unit and we're replacing an indoor coil now we could just pump the refrigerant into the outdoor unit if we were replacing just the indoor coil but we have to replace a filter dryer as well so we're not going to be able to hold the refrigerant inside the outdoor unit because we got to replace that filter dryer so you have to have a recovery tank this is our recovery tank and this is an unused recovery tank so it's empty so we have to prepare it before we use it we're going to be using it to recover 410a refrigerant we are going to pull a short vacuum on that cylinder and then we're going to put a little bit of 410a inside it so we're going to hook up our gauges first to the equipment and then we're going to go ahead and prepare the cylinder I want to show you where the filter dryer is located so you know why we're having to recover the refrigerant filter dryer is right here we got to replace that here's the indoor coil we're replacing this is the indoor coil we're replacing it with new indoor coil how do we prepare the cylinder pulling a vacuum first so you can do this several different ways. You can use a single hose. You can ju use just one of your hoses to one side of the cylinder. I'm using both and I'm gonna open the tank. It's empty. You can see there's no pressure. I'm gonna open my yellow and I'm gonna open my red and blue. And then I'm gonna turn my vacuum pump on. And then you're gonna be able to see we're gonna pull below zero. It's not gonna take very long. Maybe take just a minute. Right here. Now we're pulling below zero, you can see that. All right, once you pull below zero and it's in a vacuum, then we're gonna take and shut off our gauges. It's gonna stay below zero. And we're gonna turn off our pump. Then, with everything closed, right, we're gonna take and remove the yellow hose and connect it to our tank, like this. And on your cylinder, you can see one says liquid, one says vapor. So you can put vapor into the blue side or you can put liquid into the red side, whatever you want. It's your choice. We're going to take and turn our cylinder on. Then we're going to bleed the hose. And then we're going to fill up the tank just a little bit. maybe to five PSI. See that? Now we're at maybe five, 10 PSI. We broke the vacuum. We've got 410A, which is the refrigerant of choice that we're gonna be recovering today. And now our cylinder is prepared. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the valves off. And we've got a cylinder that's ready, remember, you never want to fill up more than 80% of the capacity of the cylinder. So if you have a cylinder that's 30 pounds, you don't want to fill it up past 80%. 15 pounds, same thing. You don't want to fill it up past 80% of its capacity. Now I'm going to show you the setup. We've got the recovery machine ready. So we got low side hose hooked up to the suction line service valve, high side hose hooked up to the liquid line service valve. Gauges, we have the yellow hose leaving the gauges and going into the inlet port or the inlet side connection for the recovery machine. And then we have the outlet port. We have a hose connected to the outlet port going from the recovery machine to the recovery tank. It's hooked up to the vapor side on the recovery machine. We're gonna go ahead and open that up. All right, we're gonna keep this closed. We're gonna go ahead and turn the power on to the NAVAC wireless scales because we want to weigh in the refrigerant. 
the tank weighs 28 pounds and 15 ounces so 29 pounds we're going to go ahead and clear it you want to make sure you weigh the refrigerant into this tank so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn the power on here's where the power hooks up use a light they have oil filled gauges to reduce fluttering vibration that's nice they have one knob to control how slow or how fast we recover they've got a purge setting for that dial that's nice a one thing I want to mention is having an inline filter is really nice that's something you can get additionally they also have a rapid Y and they have big boy hoses that you can get to help you recover faster you can also use a core removal tool if you don't know how to use a core removal tool we could do that to make this recovery faster today I'm gonna time this to see how long it takes to recover this refrigerant out of this system using just gauges so what does it hold I can't read it that's perfect great all right now let's go ahead with this off this off all right let's open up yellow red blue like this now I'm going to bleed the air out and that should do it I'm gonna open this up I'm gonna keep this closed actually because I'm going to bleed the air out of all this. Alright, there we go. Bled the air out. Now, before I turn on the recovery machine, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up the tank. And then I'm going to open this dial. And this is going to let some of that refrigerant out of the system and into the tank before we turn on the machine. Now, how is this happening? The pressure inside the system is more than the pressure in the tank. So we're gonna go ahead and get some of that refrigerant recovered without having to turn the machine on. Now I'm gonna show you what we've recovered without having to turn the machine on. One pound, about one pound and two ounces. Now, I want you to know since we have a leak in the system, we don't need to pull the pressure down below zero because we don't want to pull air inside of our tank in our recovery machine. So we're going to stop this somewhere above zero, maybe like five, maybe 10 PSI, whatever makes more sense. Right now it's 955. We are going to time how long it takes to recover this refrigerant. So we're going to go ahead and turn the recovery machine on. I'm going to bring the dial back to slow just so we can hear the difference in it running. Let's turn it on. See the lights? We're gonna turn it on maybe slow. Wow. Go fast. Wow. And then purge. All right, let's keep it on fast. All right, we'll see how long it takes. It is pulling it pretty quickly. Wow. All right, let's check the progress. Looks like we are at 10 PSI. It's exactly 10.03, so it's been eight minutes. We're gonna go ahead and take and shut our gauges off. Looks like we're at about five PSI now. Let's come over here. Let's check, take and shut the end. And then we're gonna go to close. And then we're gonna go to purge. And we're gonna take what's in our gauges, look. Whoop. Now we can shut the tank off. Turn this on, close and then turn the recovery machine off. So it took eight minutes and we pulled out, let's wait till it adjusts. We pulled out five pounds, about four or five ounces. So eight minutes to do the recovery on a three ton unit. Pretty good, I like it. Here's our gauges after we shut them off. You can see it's pretty much at zero. So we don't really have anything left, so. I got this recovery machine because it works with A2L refrigerants. It's got a DC motor. It's got a large condenser 
and it's pretty fast. I like the fact that it's lightweight. So that's one thing I can say I really like about it because being an HVAC technician, you know, we have to carry all of these tool bags. We have to carry the refrigerant tanks, nitrogen, all this stuff that's heavy. So it's nice having a recovery machine that's not heavy compared to the other recovery machines that I've got. So I'm ready for the A2L refrigerants. I would definitely recommend this. Go check out the link in the description. So if you need a A2L refrigerant compatible recovery machine, this is nice and I do recommend it. So I like the dial. I like the gauges oil field. There are some cool features. 110 volt plug is pretty long. So I can reach from this unit over here to the receptacle. That's cool. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. If you did learn something, let me know what it was down in the comments. You got a question? Questions can lead to new content. So please ask your questions, put them down in the comments. If you don't have a question, that's okay. Let me know who you are and let me know where you're from. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.